Boy, that's a thick sandwich. Okay, I'm gonna have to disengage my jaw. Uh... I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now waiting, better believe in your mind Cause it's everything You can mold, shape, find almost anything Hey everybody, this is Praxis In this video I want to share with you something that's allowed me to turn homemade bread into something that people in my family actually want to consume in the form of really nice slices of bread. I've been making homemade bread for a while. Uh, I uh, use my own homemade starter and I cook it whenever possible in this little oven right above the wood stove. I think it works really, really great for making a nice uh, crust on the bread. But one thing that I'd always have trouble with is uh, slicing it into some kind of a slice that is actually functional. Now, uh, it was fine for me. I could cut off a slab and put something on there. But in terms of making a sandwich, uh, I had a lot of trouble cutting thin slices. Uh, so my, my sandwiches would have ended up being like that thick and super crusty. So I'd be like, ah, I'd try, try to fit in my mouth. And it just wasn't happening at all for my boy. So a lot of times we were still buying, in fact, every single week, uh, whenever we went out, we were still buying store-bought bread sliced from the grocery store, and that adds up over time. Like, uh, the types of breads that we were buying, it was always like at least 6 or $7 per loaf of bread, so it was an awful lot of money, and it felt like I was throwing a lot of money away when I knew that I could make really good, really tasty bread at home, and the only thing that was holding me back from making it so that people could utilize the bread uh, is the ability to slice it really thin. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video is the device that I found to do that. Now there are multiple uh, different ways of uh, achieving that slice. One is just, I don't know, like man up and figure out how to do the cutting yourself. I've been practicing for that uh, with, I've been practicing on that for a while and I've never really improved very much. I've been given uh, tips from people that using a um, electric knife that kind of self oscillates uh, can help to kind of get you through the bread without crushing it and you can make thinner slices. There were little um, boards that have kind of uh, these little spacers in them and you can kind of do a knife through that. I've tried uh, many different methods and this one is kind of my favorite. I got this recently. This is a but it's a bread slicer, it's also for like sausage and things like that. It's made by a company called Zassenhaus. Allegedly it's German made, uh, and allegedly things that are made by Germans are well engineered, but this thing did come with a incredibly major problem. And I'm gonna talk about that in this video. Now I solved it by, um, with my own like Irish American engineering. Uh, and what this thing was missing, uh, well, first off, let's tell you how the thing works. Uh, you've got this little knob here, and this allows you to, to set the thickness of your bread slice. Uh, and what you do is just take a piece of bread, put it on this side, and turn this crank. And while you're turning the crank, you run the bread through and it will slice a piece off. And that worked out pretty well. But a huge problem uh, came uh, up while I was using this. And I guess, you know, as great as the Germans might be in uh, designing things, uh, one part of the design process that apparently the people forgot to implement when they were uh, designing this was to test it once. Uh, anyone who would ever test this would realize very quickly that as the bread comes off, it starts kind of uh, folding away uh, as you're cutting it, and you've got the crank right here, and the crank, uh, you know, is banging into the, the piece of bread, and you, know, you have to kind of take your thumb and kind of hold the bread up while you do a rotation, and then maybe your pinky finger comes into play there. It was really, really awkward and super unnecessarily awkward because uh, you, you might be wondering, well, how would the bread flop over because there's this this little metal guide right here. Well, that doesn't come with it. Uh, that was something that I just added uh, yesterday. Uh, my dad's got a machine shop and I went over there and we just took a little piece of uh, metal here. It's a piece of stainless steel. It didn't have to be stainless steel. It was actually kind of a pain in the butt to work with it because stainless steel is a little harder than aluminum. But we happened to have this little uh, piece of scrap, uh, bent it into this shape, uh, made a couple of holes, uh, tapped some holes into here and screwed it on. And now it's perfectly good as a guide because now you can put bread through and uh, uh, you know, it stays tucked up in there and you can just take it out. So now it works really, really well. Uh, you know, again, if the Germans had just tested their device once, they would have realized, um, I was going to try a German accent. I'm not going to try it. They would have realized, oh, this thing doesn't work very well. We need to just add a simple little finger to hold the uh, bread up. It doesn't have to be this uh, crazy if you were to buy this device, which I would highly recommend just because it 
saves me a ton of money. Now, uh, I'm gonna get to the, the cost of this device in a, a bit because it is a bit of an investment, but if you think about it in terms of how many loaves of bread that you'll never have to buy anymore, it pays for itself uh, re relatively quickly. Now, if you were gonna get this and you don't happen to have a dad that has a machine shop or you don't have a machine shop yourself, uh, this finger here, uh, it doesn't really need to be super rigid. You could take kind of anything, like a, a couple of chopsticks or something like that, you know, offset them a little bit, and you could literally like just silicone glue them on here. It's not like the, the bread is putting an enormous amount of force on this. It really could be anything. I mean, honest to God, like a piece of cardboard that was kind of bent properly with a little bit of paperwork uh, around it to make it a little bit rigid. You know, that would be totally fine. I did this and I even like, like check that, check that detail work out there. Even match the, uh, Match the contour on the side there. Uh, you know, so it doesn't have to be anything this severe, but I did a lot of shopping around and I did a lot of investigating about different ways of slicing bread in a way where you're gonna get those nice thin slices. I looked at like big uh, electric machines and you know, those are even more expensive uh, than this device. Uh, you know, the downside of that was, you know, it was more money. Uh, it was also, you know, it takes up a lot of space. You know, you only have so much space in your house and certainly in your kitchen. Uh, and, you know, you don't want to have big stuff. I like this. It's pretty small. It just stores in the cupboard. The big electric slicers, you know, they take up a lot of room. They're uh, pretty expensive. And, uh, every single time I would contact a company that was selling one of those big electric slicers, I would say, you know, I don't, I'm not slicing up Wonder Bread. I'm slicing up, you know, a nice homemade loaf that has kind of a crust uh, on the surface. Can your uh, machine go through a crusty bread? And, uh, Unanimously, all the people who make these kind of electric slicers, at least all the ones that I got in touch with, all said no. Our stuff is just for like, you know, soft, you know, fluffy Wonder Breads without any kind of a crust at all. The devices must exist to slice crusty bread, but I certainly couldn't find any of them marketed towards the public. Maybe you gotta go to like some kind of a specialty, like bakery supply store or something like that. I wasn't able to find them. And for the price points that I was seeing, like $500 for these machines that can only slice white bread, I can't imagine what the ones that can cut, cut through uh, crusty bread were, uh, were gonna cost people. Uh, as for the those oscillating electric knives, which uh, were another option, uh, you know, those are not very expensive, but I really felt like the consistency of this was gonna be a lot better and I really loved like how I'm not <clears throat> I'm not crushing the bread as I'm going through because that was always my big problem in the past I'd be kind of crushing the bread whenever I tried to slice so this works really well so how much does this cost well I can't say exactly what it costs today because prices are always going up and down and up and down <laughs> I'm just kidding they're always going up uh, when I bought this it was just about 200 bucks and that's like that's a lot of money to spend to cut bread but here's the way that I look at it is every single loaf of bread that I make and I would make one per week it's saving me about six or seven dollars because the raw ingredients to make the bread are you know they're so inexpensive that they might as well be free I, you know I buy big uh, bulk bags of flour you know I you know it costs maybe I don't know I don't even know. It's, it's not very much for the raw ingredients to make bread. It's just the flour and it's the water and it's the salt. Uh, I have my own yeast starter so I don't have to pay, pay for yeast or anything like that. In terms of energy, I've got a wood stove running right here and I'm using it to heat the house anyway. So it, it's zero energy to make the bread. So the loaves of bread are essentially zero and that saves me about six or seven dollars per week. So over a year, that's six or seven dollars times 50 weeks per year. You can see that it adds up pretty quickly where a device like this, you know, I'm still kind of paying it off because I've only owned it for a few months, but in very short order, I'm gonna be, uh, you know, penny saved, penny earned and earning an awful lot of money by being able to slice my own bread. And again, you know, you can make bread and you can do your own cuts with just a regular knife, and I did that for a long time. But if, uh, if your bread is not being utilized because, you know, the pieces are too thick and, you know, you got kids in your family and their mouths only open up like this, they can't open up like that to get around like a really thick uh, piece of crusty bread that you're making. Uh, you know, if the reality is that you're ending up buying store-bought bread because, uh, you know, the homemade stuff, you just can't get it thin enough, something like this might be good for you. But again, this one made by Zassenhaus, uh, it uh, works really well. Uh, you know, the engineering on it feels really firm, uh, but they have that major, major issue. You, got, you have to do something about this, whether it's something really, you know, slick and beautiful looking, like what, uh, you know, me and my dad did the other day here, or if it's just a couple of chopsticks or a piece of cardboard or, you know, a, a clothes hanger or something like that, you know, again, it, you could just silicone glue it on. You don't need like a ton of, you know, you really don't need, you know, screws going through. That's a, you know, definitely overkill. Uh, but you definitely would need something because it is just really infuriating that you're, you, you're running it through and you're trying to get your finger over there to kind of hold up the bread and you're trying to finish up the cut here and the blade slowing down because you're trying to, you know, 
you know, fumble on the other side. So you would kind of make sloppy cuts on the back sides of the bread. So, uh, you know, it definitely needs to be finished being made, but I would highly recommend it. And this thing uh, is going to save me hundreds and hundreds of dollars over, you know, the next couple decades of my life because I'm able to get loaves of bread that I would normally have paid, you know, nearly $10 for and in the future, maybe more than $10. Uh, and I'm able to get them essentially practically for free. That's it. Hope you find this helpful and thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, if you like fresh homemade bread, then you're going to want to sample a slice of this hot panini right up there. Mm-hmm.